Hey my friends, how are you? It's Ray here. I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you're having a blessed and delightful week. And I hope that you continue to look towards Jesus, especially in this time where we see all these things happening in our world. You know, today we need Jesus more than ever. And I'm just on here today to make another quick Bible study video. Um, I love to study the Word of God. I love to share the Word of God with all my brothers and sisters. And I want to share it with you as well. And I hope that as we do this study today, that we, the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. Um, the only thing that you'll need for this study is your Bible. And I'll put all the verses and all the texts below in the description. So you'll have them for your reference as well. Um, I do ask that you uh, subscribe to our channel and hit the like button and share this with your family and friends because you never know who might be seeking the truth, especially in these times. And I know that God's word will be a blessing to them as well. So today we're going to study a topic called how did sin enter the world? With all what we see that's happening in our world today, a lot of people probably have questions. Why is this happening? How did this start it? So tonight or today we'll study how did sin enter the world? After this video, my next video will be about how did the devil come about? So you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for that one. That's why you should click the notification. So when I post that one, you'll get it. But for today, let's look at how did sin enter the world? And right away, like I said, you get your Bible. We'll turn to Genesis 1.1 and we'll see what it says. And I'll be reading from the Bible in your hearing and we'll go through the Bible. So the Bible says in the beginning in Genesis 1.1, God created the heavens and the earth. So God created everything. Now, when God created everything, God created it out of love. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, along with Jesus, which is the Son of God, they created everything. They created a perfect world, a world without sin. And what did they do? Now, they created the earth on the first, on the first day, the Holy Spirit moved upon the waters, right? On the second day, light was created. The third day, the sky was created. Um, this is you can find all of this is in Genesis chapter one and chapter two. I urge and encourage you to read those chapters. On the third day, the dry land, the sea plants and trees were created. Now, God just spoke all these things into existence. Now, let's look at Genesis um, chapter one, verse three. It says, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now, that was the first day. God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now, Genesis chapter 1, verse 6, what we just talked about, says the creation of the firmament. And God said, let the firmament be in the midst of the water and let it divide from the water. So basically what God, he separated firmament means the water above and the water below. He separated the water like this, the rivers, and then he put the waters in the clouds above. So God separated the firmament. And then we have Genesis 1, 9. It says, and God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together onto one place and let the dry land appear. So God separated the waters from the land. All right. And then we also have now the fourth day that God created the sun, the moon and the stars. And that's Genesis 1, 14. It says, and God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for a sign and for a season and for days and years. Now, you might say, but Brother Ray, you just told me that God created light on the first day. Now, if he created light on the first day, how do we have light in Genesis 14 on the fourth day? So what happened basically, <clears throat> and the Bible says, Jesus says, I'm the light. He said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We also see that the Bible says that the word became flesh. So Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Wherever Jesus goes, his righteousness push forth that light. So on the first day when Jesus came to the planet, he said, let there be light. It basically his glory, his light come upon the face of the dark earth and his light shined through the world. We'll do another study about that later to talk about God's glory, his countenance and his light. But God's light was that light in the beginning that shone upon the world. And after that, he created the sun, the moon and the stars. Then we'll look at what God did. On the fifth day, God created the living things in the sea, the creatures that fly, in, and he created all of that. The fish, the fowl of the air, the birds of the air, he created that. And then on the sixth day, God created the animals, the beasts and the land. And then finally, he created human beings. Now, there's something special about when God created human beings. 
Uh, and that's Genesis 1 26. And I'll read for you. It says, and God said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness. Let him have and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth. So God, they came together and they formed a man with their hand. Every other thing that God created, he spoke it into existence. But God took the time to form a man with his hands and he created man. All right. From the dust, he created man. Then after that, it says, and the Lord God formed man. This is Genesis 1, uh, no, 2, 7. It says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a living soul. So two things we need to have a soul. God formed a man from the dust and then he breathed the breath of life into him and man became a soul. So soul consists of a body and the spirit of God. So we see that. So God formed a man out of the dust of the ground. And he, that's the only thing that he took time to make. And he created us in his likeness. This is the reason why God loves us so much. This is the reason why God came to die for us, to redeem us, because God took time to form us, to create us, because he loves us and cares for us. So that's what God did on the sixth day. And then on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. He stopped and he looked and he said, everything that I've made is so good, very, very good. And God rested from his work on the seventh day. But God also did something. God did something very, very important in the Garden of Eden. You see, after God created all these beautiful things, the world, the animals, the plants, it was so glorious. Nothing compared to what we have today. What we're seeing today is a result of the aftermath of sin. You still see beauty in everything. You know, this is the fall season. And as we see the trees and the color, you still see some beauty in them. But they just imagine before sin how beautiful everything was. A perfect world without sin, without no trees dying, without no animals dying, where man was supposed to live for eternity. But God did something. And now we're getting into how did sin enter the world. So watch what God did in Genesis uh, 2, 5. Now, God said, and every plant of the field before it was on the earth, and every herb uh, of the field bringing forth fruit. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. So you see, there was no work. There was no rain. Everything was so perfect. But something happened. Look at Genesis uh, 2, verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man who he formed. So after he formed the man, he put man into this garden. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and that is good for food. And of the tree of uh, life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge and good of evil. So there was two trees in the garden. You had the tree of life and then you had the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So the tree of knowledge and good was, of evil was a tree that God told them they should not eat of. But the tree of life, they could have eat from that tree. Now, God gave them a test. Now, look at what God, the test that God gave them in Genesis 2, chapter 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. So I'm sure it was thousands of trees, thousands of fruit. You know, God said, Of every tree you may freely eat. Just eat of the trees. But look at verse 17. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eat of it, thou shalt surely die. So there was this one tree that God told them, of, I'll show you that tree. You should not eat of that tree because in the day you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. So they had thousands of trees to choose from. But God put that one tree now, many may say, well, why did God put that tree there? God wanted to test their love for him and their obedience to him. And if they will be faithful to him for all that God has given to them. You know, it's the same thing with us sometimes. God gives us so much. We may think that we don't have a lot. We may think that we're going through a crisis or we may think that we're in trials. But God is still blessing us. You know, I've seen some documentaries and I've seen I've seen some places where people have way less than what we have. And they're thankful for everything. But God said, 
Sometimes we need to stay with him more than with the world. As a matter of fact, not sometimes, all the times we should stay with Christ because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. So God said in the Garden of Eden, that particular tree, do not eat of that tree. Now, what happened? What happened? Well, let's look in the Bible at what happened. And I will go over to Genesis chapter 3. Now, the serpent, which was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So there was a serpent. Now, in the, in the Bible and in those days, the sword and serpent, according to studies, the serpent was one of the most beautiful creatures ever created. The serpent had shimmering skin, and serpents actually had wings. So the serpent would fly. It was a beautiful creature, not like these snakes that we have today. The snakes came about after the serpent got cursed to the ground. So the serpent was very beautiful. And look what happened. The serpent, one day, Eve, which was Adam's wife, God created a helpmate for Adam, which was Eve. Um, so Eve was walking in the garden and she wandered to the tree. And the serpent approached her and the serpent said, and he said unto the woman, yea, had God said, you shall not eat of every tree. So the serpent saw her and the serpent said, did God tell you you can't eat from this tree? And what did the woman say? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat it, neither shall he touch it, lest he die. So you see, the serpent engaged the woman in a conversation. The serpent got her attention because the serpent was very cunning. And the serpent was being used by the devil. The devil knows how to get us sometimes. This is why we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. This is why we have to walk with Jesus daily. Because the serpent studies us, which is the devil. Him and his fallen angels, they study our movements. They study our actions. The Bible says only God is unknowing, which means that the devil doesn't know anything about our future. He doesn't know our thoughts. So basically what he does, he studies the way we move, the way we speak, the way we talk, the way we act. And he saw the woman and he studied her. And at that moment when she came to the tree, when he knew she was alone from Adam, where he knew that there's no support, he decided to engage her. And sometimes this is why we need to always count on Jesus for support because the devil is always trying us, my brothers and sisters. And that's why we have to always look to Jesus and be in constant communication with Christ through prayer, through his word. And let's continue to see what happened. Now, after the serpent engaged the woman, the woman said unto the serpent, now the woman said unto the serpent, we read that, we may freely eat of every tree, but of the midst of the tree in the midst of the garden, we shall not eat. Which means she knew she was not supposed to eat that fruit. She didn't know what was going to be the outcome. She knew that, less, that yes, we will die. But she had no clue that all of this trauma would come in the world today. She had no clue that she knew that about death, that God said you will die. But can you imagine, do you think that she would see later on, we'll study all that, how her son would kill her other son? She didn't really realize what was happening. And this is the same thing the devil do to us. He tricks us. And sometimes he makes it look good. He always makes it look good. But in the end, it's very dangerous for us. Now, the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. He started lying to her. You shall not surely die if you eat it. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now you see what he did here? He told her, if you want to be a god, you want to be as gods, try this fruit. Try this fruit and you'll have knowledge beyond your own understanding. Let's go on, brothers and sisters. I'm in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eye and the tree desired to make one wise, the devil was tricking her how to be more wise. She took up the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and they did eat. Now, once they ate that fruit, they chose 
they chose basically if they're going to be obedient to God or if they're going to be obedient to the devil. That's how sin entered the world, my brothers and sisters, because of a simple choice to choose to pick a fruit and to eat that fruit. When God had told them simply, of every tree you may eat, but of this one tree do not eat. But Eve, they chose to eat that fruit with the deception of the devil. And as a result of that, it says that, and the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? This is Genesis 3.13. And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. So the serpent tricked her, deceived her, and she did eat of the fruit. You know, today the devil is going around tricking a lot of us. And sometimes we eat the fruit. And I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep our hands in Jesus' hand. And don't fall for the devil's deception. Unto the woman he said, this is Genesis 3.16. I will greatly multiply thy sorrows and thy conception in sorrows and shall bring forth children and the desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over you. And unto Adam he said, because thou would hearken unto the voice of thy wife and thou hast eaten of the tree which I've commanded thee, saying thou shall not eat. So God said, because you eat of the tree, I told you, I commanded you not to eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake and in sorrow shall thou eat of all the days of thy life. So, Sorrow came into the world for the very first time. Sin came into the world for the very first time. The devil tricked them and told them that when they ate this fruit, they will be like gods. But little did they know that when they ate this fruit, the beginning of sorrow, torment, sin, and all the chaos we have in the world today would come from that very act. My brothers and sisters, that's the way sin entered the world. Because of a simple choice, <clears throat> from Eve and Adam to eat of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden, which God had told them not to eat. The serpent beguiled them and the serpent tricked them. And in my next study, I will make a video to show or discuss, we'll look at how did the devil come about or where did he come from? Or how did he end up on the earth? So I encourage you, when we talk about the serpent in the scripture, we're talking about the devil. The devil used the serpent as an entity to trick Eve at that tree. And I want to encourage you, don't allow the devil to trick you today. Don't allow the devil to manipulate you. Be strong and be courageous in the Lord. Keep your eyes on Jesus. The Bible says the devil goes around like a roaring lion seeking those whom he can devour. And I don't want any of us to fall for his traps and his deception. Sometimes we fall for, for things that we do, we're carnal. The Bible says we're all carnal. But when you fall, remember to ask for repentance. Remember to ask God, dear Lord, forgive me for my sins. Make me better. Help me to overcome. And God will help you to overcome. So for our first topic, how did sin enter the world, my brothers and sisters? And that was just a discussion. Now, you can find these stories if you read your Bible. It's a very quick read, and I urge, and I urge and encourage you to read your Bibles, brothers and sisters, especially with the time we're living in. The story is found in Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. And as you read your Bible, ask for the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you into all truth. And God will show you His Word because He wants you to know His Word. God does love you. God does care for you. So, how did sin enter the world? Sin entered the world because Eve chose to be beguiled by the serpent. She picked up the fruit and then she took it and gave it to her husband. And because of the love he has for her, because of her beauty and because of the love that she, he possessed for her, he freely ate of the fruit to be with his wife. And as a result of their disobedience to God and choosing that they rather listen to someone else more than God, sin entered the world, brothers and sisters. But don't lose hope, because that's the reason why Jesus Christ came to die, to save us from our sins. And as we progress in our studies, I'll be studying all these topics. So I urge and encourage you to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, share the videos with your friends and family, because there'll be many more videos to come. And I'll put the texts below. 
They're all found in Genesis 1, 2, chapters 1, 2, and 3 for you to review and for you to study. And I pray that God encourages you and I pray that you continue to look to Jesus in this trying time as we approach his second coming. Okay, so I hope that you enjoy that study. And this is Brother Lee. Until the next video, always remember that God is always good. Until the next time, bye-bye.